Can you believe that it's that time of the year again already? This year's list, all about nostalgia and novelty, which I suppose Transformers always is. Either way, cue the music. In 10th spot, we got Shattered Glass Sideswipe. I know that this mold has been out a million times before. This would have to be up there as like the most used molds of the last 10 years. But from day dot, I've been saying, do this guy. Well, do a Marta Wheeljack, but this is pretty close. Seriously, how did this not happen sooner? Feels like the delivery of a long-standing promise. But now, now in yellow, give it to me in yellow. And then, top five, baby. This is so good. I am so excited that they finally actually, you know, did these figures because I'm sure I'm not the only one who when Siege rolled around thought that this is more of what we were going to get. And also, for this to even exist, Hasbro clearly knows that it's a bunch of like much older peeps who are buying this crap. Little kids can get it and be like, oh cool, he looks kind of like an Ugg boot. But to us, this is the first time you saw him. This is the very beginning. And it's just so nifty that he can look so G1 cartoony and then be that alt mode and not look too crazy. Nine. In eighth place is one for the IDW comic fans, Nova Prime. I know this wasn't everyone's cup of tea because it was off a mold that's, you know, being done to death at this point, but they did something fresh and different with it. And I actually think this might be my favorite use of this mold. It's just, I appreciate they finally did it officially. It's an officious release. Welcome to the dead universe. Blah, 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 blah. Next up, we got another Prime by way of the Bayverse. This time, Bumblebee Origins Studio Series movie, Bumblebee the Third. Optimus Prime. There was a lot of hype for this figure because that whole kind of like buzzworthy capsule line is a little more elusive than your standard release and this was like a pretty big deal to be putting out in that. I'm sure it'll pop up again. I know there's been a second wave of them like showing up around the place which has made it a bit easier for people to get their hands on him but you know earlier in the year the hype was very real and I get it. He is super poseable. It's um it's almost surprising with the amount of you know non-existent kind of kibble that he actually transforms at all. Ab crunch? Forget about it. Double jointed elbows? Get out of here. Love it. And then to round out the bottom five, we're going all the way back to the very beginning of 2023 for Tarn. Another IDW release. I know he's shown up a few times since then, but you know, he's one of those characters where they've done that cool thing of he showed up in one thing and now he's in all the things and just kind of, you know, been sewn into the fabric of the Transformers universe. And again, lots of third party versions, some of them arguably better, but I'm a mainline Haztac release guy. And so I was, I was pretty stoked with him. Although does anyone else think that his currency was diluted by Bludgeon just being a straight repaint with a different head? Poor form. So this first entry into my top five of 2023 might be a little bit of a contentious one, but I stand by it. G.I. Joe crossover sound wave. Hear me out. I know that this line is chunky, simple, hollow, kibbly, but is it not like the realization of a childhood dream to have, you know, this kind of toy crossover with two of the big heavy hitters of the 80s? I think this line is a winner alone just for revisiting that human alliance thing of being able to have, or even that diaclone thing of having pilots back in your Transformers. And for it to be G.I. Joe's, it means they gotta be big, and big he is. He's just cool. He just looks really cool. I love the idea. This one might almost be more of a conceptual entry than a physical entry, but I love it. Bumblebee sucked, but Soundwave and Megatron, awesome. And now we're getting Optimus and Cup? Keep them coming. Keep it rolling. Let's get Tidal Wave as a flag. In fourth spot, I honestly can't believe he's not higher, but that's a testimony to how good a year it's been. Studio Series Snarl. Dinobot. Do I need to say more? No. But I will. He's great. I love him. These Dinobots have been sick. 
His knees, actually pretty good. They're big, they're chunky, they're solid. They look the part, they do what you need them to do. This is definitely gonna be the definitive Dinobot set. No one wants a core class Volcanicus combiner. We want this. And I don't know what it is, but I've always had a real soft spot for Snarl. Although he kind of was largely forgotten from the film itself, we will not forget. I will remember you. This year, they're kind of all by the way of primes. Firstly, Volvo Prime. How unexpectedly good was this? I guess a lot of people got the Christmas one, so they knew that this was a great mold, but what a great mold. Did something different, really realistic car, no thrills, just good old fashioned honest primal energy. Then we've got Studio Series leader Optimus Primal. This figure is actually really good. The transformation is more involved than you'd expect for, you know, a hominoid to turn into a hominoid. But he didn't get in the actual list because the way they did these guys in the movie, they really did them dirty. He's just boring. It's just a wall of black and grey and you forget he exists. He's been on my desk for like three months and I keep forgetting he's even there because he just recedes into the background, which is a shame because he's dope. And then, I don't know why I couldn't bring myself to put him higher on the list because he is a really cool toy and I love these games. I don't know. I couldn't commit to giving him a place on the list with so many good figures out this year, but I still did want to mention that he's awesome. In third place is a figure that was incredibly eagerly anticipated for this year. And when I finally got him in hand, he did not disappoint. It was everything that I'd hoped it could be, but a little bit more. Commander class Amada Optimus Prime. I love the character. Amada got me back into collecting as a bigger kid from being a little G1 kid. My brother and I used to play with a superposable like deluxe class release they did for Amada Prime all the time. And so for like that posability, and aesthetics to be mixed with actually being able to combine. You really can't go wrong with this figure. Even if you don't like Armada, this Prime kicks. He kicks and punches and slaps and stomps. All of it. He's just got that incredible toyetic quality to him where he feels realer than real. He's hyper real. Having him in hand just sends you all the way back to when you first kind of got into it. He's a prime example. <laughs> prime example. He's a prime example of everything that Transformers Collecting is about. Love Amada Optimus. First and second place was a really, really tough one for me this year. I found I just kept flip-flopping back and forth between who was gonna get which place. Even today, as I sat down to film this, I was like, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Anyway, in second place, Death Saurus. A lot of you may be thinking that it's just because he's so fresh in mind, but Japanese G1 has long been my jam. This figure in particular is a fantastic example of how weird Japanese G1 got. Breast Force, what? But also, when I was first getting back into Transformers at the dawn of the internet almost, it wasn't a given that people just knew that these series existed. I can remember thinking, you know, there was the G1 cartoon, and then there was like the Armada and Robots in Disguise and Beast Wars and being like, yeah, they're all connected, I know Transformers. But then getting a little deeper on the interwebs and being like, wait, what? G1 kept going in Japan? For another season? For three more seasons. And Beast Wars? And so I feel like Death Saurus for me represents my Transformers horizons expanding. And they really have done him justice with just how incredible this figure is. It's got big shelf presence. Anyone who's watched the channel for a while or knows me and my Transformers taste can probably guess who took out the number one spot for this year. My boy, Magnus. Ultra Magnus has been my favorite character for so long that I don't even really remember a time when he wasn't my favorite character. At my local video store, we watched the 86 movie so many times that we probably ended up doing irreparable damage to that VHS and it's probably just a grainy nightmare if it still exists at all. Thank God for 18 million, you know, different DVD and Blu-ray releases, but this figure, it is the pinnacle of Ultra Magnus in plastic. With the exception of Ultra Mammoth, I have like every Ultra Magnus figure that they've ever done because I love him that much and this is the shining beacon at the top of the pile. I really didn't think that you could get much better than like Kingdom or Masterpiece, but then they did. They really did. Everything that I love about Ultra Magnus is represented in this, in this mighty fistful of plastic. This has been hard for me to film because so often I just look at him and just get lost in those aviators. The size, the flair, the finesse, 
He has been a real standout of 2023. And if I'm being honest, if I did like the last decade, he would probably be pretty close to taking out the number one spot of the decade. But Prime, I'm just a soldier. I'm not worthy. Don't say that. Don't say that about yourself, Magnus. You are eminently worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! And so that's a wrap on the year that was. What do you think? Have you got your top 10 lists out? What do you think of mine? Would you change it around? Is there anyone who you feel has no business being on that list? Do you feel like I forgot anyone important? Hit me up in the comments below. I want to know. I want to know what you think. Thank you all so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. For those of you that have and like a regular, you know, commenters, I like getting into it. You know, as they say, let's get nerdy with it. I enjoy the whole interactive nature of this medium. So let's keep that going into 2024. Catch.